Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to the Oak Park Township Trustee Candidate Forum. Um, this race is for four open trustee seats. My name is Peggy Kell, and I'm the Voter Service Chair for the League of Women Voters of Oak Park and River Forest. Um, the League is a nonpartisan organization that doesn't endorse candidates, but seeks to register and educate voters on local, state, and national issues so they can make informed decisions. Uh, early voting started March 10th at the local courthouses and will start uh, at the Oak Park Village Hall on March 22nd. The election day is April 6th. Um, this is our last Oak Park forum um, before the, uh, elect the April 6th election. Many thanks to Rashmi Swain and Bridget Opdahl from the Oak Park Library for their technical expertise and partnership. We could not have done this without them. The ground rules for the forum um, are as follows. This forum is being recorded. It will be posted on the Oak Park Library's YouTube page and on uh, the League's YouTube page as soon as it's ready. Candidates will give one minute opening and closing statements. After opening statements, the same question will be asked of each candidate with one minute to answer. The order of speaking will be alphabetical and will alternate. Um, statements and uh, the questions will be timed. I, as moderator, will read the questions that were submitted in advance, but questions still can be submitted um, via the Q&A. As moderator, I'll make sure questions are appropriate and avoid duplication. Candidates, do you have any questions? Are you ready? All righty. So first off, Eric, you're going to start with your opening statement of one minute. Thank you, Peggy. And greetings. My name is Eric Davis. Uh, I am an Oak Park Township trustee currently serving in my third term and asking for your vote and your support to serve for a fourth term. I'm doing that because I want to build on the tremendous accomplishments that we have made so far, um, and, but also to grow what it is that we do and to adapt to changing times. Um, this is a period where experience matters. And um, what we have accomplished at the township, whether it is growing senior center, seniors uh, uh, services through the creation of the senior center that I was involved in uh, that has brought our seniors down to Main Street or supporting the community mental health board or working with the, um, the township's youth services interventionist program. I was a volunteer for the township youth services before I was a trustee. Um, there's a lot uh, ahead of us. And I, if there's one thing I want you to take away from uh, my approach, it is collaboration. That is the feature of my campaign, radical collaboration. And we'll hear more about it later. Thank you. Thank you. Valerie? Hi, I'm Valerie Lester, and I want to serve you as a township trustee. The township focuses on social services, helping those in the community that need a helping hand making Oak Park a more compassionate community. I'm currently an active volunteer in the township and on the Senior Services Committee. My favorite day of the week is the day I deliver meals to seniors. For many, I am their most regular visitor. I'm running to support and strengthen the township, step up my contribution to the community and leverage the skills I developed in my business and marketing career. The role of trustee is fiscal oversight and policy. Our, um, our budget should reflect the priorities of the township. The three greatest challenges for the township right now are responding to the needs and created by the pandemic, reaching more people that need a helping hand and building awareness of the township. I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Adi. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, thank you to the League for hosting this forum. Uh, I'm Adi Onayemi. I'm a 37-year resident of uh, Oak Park. Uh, I am a trustee of the Oak Park Township, uh, currently finishing my second term. As trustee, my focus is on the township vision to be a well-known and respected community partner and the leading provider of proactive, responsive, and relevant supportive services for all residents at every stage of life. I'm committed to the responsible use of funds for all residents, um, for social and mental health, and addressing the township's importance by ensuring that we develop equitable opportunities to reach all residents. I'm a consensus builder. I strive to build working relationships with board members, staff, and the community. I understand governance and have direct track record to prove it. My tenure as the president of the school board uh, and the leadership as, pre as board president of uh, 
West Suburban Medical Center are good examples. Thank you. Thank you. Jacqueline? Hi. Uh, first off, thank you so much for the League, uh, League of Women Voters for hosting this event for all of the candidates in Oak Park. That's a huge undertaking and it's really important when we can't be knocking on doors and meeting um, in this is a weird time. Um, but I'm Jacqueline Rodriguez. I'm running for township trustee. Uh, my drive as an individual as well as a candidate is to create equitable systemic change. Um, I decided to run because as I became more and more involved in the community and some of the bodies that govern it, I, I realized that the township does such amazing work, but nobody knows that it exists or what it does or how much, you know, uh, it could help them in if they don't, you know, if they're not a senior or if they're not um, maybe have a disability or dealing with mental health issues. Um, I believe that the nature of the services provided by the township offer a great opportunity to set the standard for equitable policy in Oak Park. Um, I'm excited and unafraid to learn and I'm, I'm going to do everything in my power to listen to everybody with their lived experience that volunteer their time um, to Oak Park to help us. Thank you. Tim? So good afternoon all and thank you to the league and to the library for hosting this amazing forum. My name is Tim Thomas and I am running for township trustee. I'm running because the pandemic reminds us how much we have to support people and people in our community. The work that I have done with youth in our community and the work that I've done over the years with seniors reinforces that folks are just struggling and the township is the social safety net of Oak Park. And so we need dedicated and committed folks that want to maintain the services we have and expand the services that are needed to keep folks safe and keep folks in our community. So that's why I'm running. That's part of my commitment. I currently serve on the Youth Services Committee of Oak Park, and I am often reminded through that work that uh, folks just need help. And so this is a great place to do that work and to help the great people of Oak Park. Thank you. Thank you. Margaret? Thank you to the League for this opportunity to get to know the candidates. My name is Margaret Tribus, and I'm seeking a second term. Since I really understand the need and the value of social services for all Oak Park residents from youth to seniors, there's a lot of work to be done. I've raised my three children in, village, in the village and I've lived here for over 40 years, hoping to age in place in Oak Park. I'm running for the trustee because I bring experience and an understanding of township government and how we have to work with other governmental bodies if we're really gonna make a difference in the needs of the future, particularly post pandemic. I bring an educator's perspective, having worked in diverse school districts and now a professor of graduate students at Concordia University. I've served on the Township Youth Committee for eight years, very proud of program development and collaboration uh, with other agencies and other uh, in the schools. I've worked with senior services and currently I serve on the Community Mental Health Board. I can provide leadership and experience and look forward to sharing those thoughts with you as we continue to go on with questions. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the first question, Valerie, you're gonna start with it. Okay, so what are the responsibilities of township government? If people don't know what the township does, um, tell me what the township does. The township has um, three main arms. Um, senior services, for which they do the most direct action, meals, transportation, um, other supportive services. Youth services, which my understanding is focused primarily at helping um, at-risk youth um, be productive, um, stay out of trouble. And the Community Health Board, which works across the nonprofits in the community to um, make sure that the mental health services are um, working well and helps fund those mental health services. If I were to communicate, wanted to communicate one thing about the township, it is that it is the place to call if you need a helping hand and you don't know where to get it. If the township doesn't do it, they know who does. Thank you. Uh, Adi? Uh, 
always have to remember to unmute. Uh, yeah, so the township uh, is responsible for social safety. Uh, they provide a social safety net uh, for the community. Um, we do have uh, the uh, various departments, which are uh, youth uh, services, senior services, mental health board, um, and also uh, we're, we're responsible for general assistance um, uh, for, for people who may be um, having, you know, in between transitioning, uh, maybe with jobs or things like that. Um, we, we do engage, uh, most of our work is done through partnerships and other agencies, but we have very incredible competent employees who also harness um, uh, grants uh, and, uh, and follow up on monies from uh, federal, state, county, and various agencies. Uh, for instance, during the pandemic, we've been able to um, uh, get reimbursed, reimbursed for various services that we've had to provide and uh, elements of our buildings that had to be re reworked in order to be able to meet the COVID um, uh, processes. So um, that's what we do. Uh, we, we are the social uh, network for the, for the community. Thank you. Jacqueline? Hi. So um, it's kind of hard to answer the question <laughs> as a third person, but I want to add that we also do the assessor services. So if you need um, your t property taxes assessed, that's where you go. And it's, and it's the most beloved arm, you know, for some people. <laughs> Um, but also, I, kind of in an abstract direction, I think that the township, because it's service-based, is kind of the heartbeat of the village, um, because everybody moves here for um, the things that the township does, really. You know, we, we uplift our community, we help one another, we do everything that we can, and that is through the township, mostly, a lot of those things that... Um, people talk about as far as the government's role, you know, a governmental role. So um, it's a little bit more abstract, but yes, that I think that we are, we are what people move here for, to be honest. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tim? So uh, building off of what Jacqueline said, it is hard to answer. There's, a, there's just a statutory what the township should do. So the township is the general assistance for the indigent. It's, you know, the assessment of uh, property taxes and then, you know, um, larger outside of just Oak Park because we don't do this in Oak Park, but it's also um, kind of the statutory rights of a township is road maintenance and all that stuff. No, we don't do that in Oak Park. What Oak Park does um, is general assistance for the indigent, the programs that we do amazingly well are youth services and senior services. These are the things that Oak Park Township is known for. And so that's where I will center it on is that Oak Park Township does an amazing job with their senior services programs. They've done that through the pandemic, through their food delivery and through supportive services. They have done that through youth services over the last couple of months through the pandemic as well. So that's what I will center on is that Oak Park Township does a great job and I want to uh, be elected to help support that work. Thank you. Margaret? Well, historically, you know, township government goes back to a vote that Oak Park took early in the 70s that we would have township government. And um, it was by choice that uh, we really decided that social services were going to be a priority here in our village. And it's very important to know that we are the smallest taxing body of every dollar that you pay on your tax bill that has been allocated and has to be decided by uh, township government. And people have the opportunity to serve on various committees such as the senior committee, youth services, uh, community mental health, which has its own funding source, and then again, the assessor and um, the general assistance. So it really is the arm that is very different than the village. A lot of times people get confused. I even wa was walking my dog today and somebody said, oh, you're running for the township. Let me, let me tell you what I want to complain about. So we have to be careful to distinguish the two. Thank you. <clears throat> Eric? 
And I want to echo the challenge of this particular question and add some additional information. Um, for, first of all, actually, township government is, is the oldest form of government in the United States. Um, you know, Plymouth Colony was a township. Um, you know, the township in Oak Park was founded in 1903. Um, it has added services, the Community Mental Health Board, what's called a, 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 a 708 board by the legislature. Uh, was established later, again, as Margie points out by referendum. Um, but recently we've seen an evolution in some of the things that the township has provided. Um, things like preventative services, where we went and got a grant to uh, work on um, helping people with substance abuse issues. Uh, the cargo circles that we run in the, in the middle schools. Uh, programs like Face It that we now uh, work with the, the uh, Oak Park Police Department. Um, our interventionist program people know us from has evolved also. We've, we've shifted the focus more toward children in the transitional years. Uh, I would also note the assessor was mentioned earlier. Uh, the assessor actually helps you with your appeals. Um, Ali doesn't actually set the assessment. He helps you reduce your assessment, which explains why he's the most popular politician in Oak Park. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Adi, you're going to start this next question. How should the township attack the issue of, of equity in their services? Again, if you ever, if any of you ever want me to repeat the question, since we have six people going through this, please just ask, and, and there's no problem with repeating the question. So, um, yeah, the issue of equity. Well, one of, the, one of the key things is that we meet people, uh, unfortunately, a lot of times when we're not doing the preventative aspects of uh, deli uh, service delivery, we're meeting them when they're at their worst. Um, so we, we are able to uh, um, give services that they need. And that's one thing with equity. Uh, it's not being equal, it's actually providing what a particular circumstance a person requires. So that's something that we do very well. Uh, again, uh, most of our staff are uh, social workers, so they come from that um, element of understanding and working through basic need. The key thing, though, is how to let everyone know what we have available, trying to make sure that we communicate that to people before they need our services, um, so that when they do need it, uh, we're able to meet, the, meet them where they, they need their work. Thank you. Jacqueline? Nice. Um, so equity is in every part of everything in, our, in society, it's a, especially when we're talking about services. So I think that when we want to move forward and advance equitable policy, we need a few things. We need to think creatively and we need to listen. Um, we need to make sure that we're keeping up with trainings and that we are meeting people where they're at. As Adi had said, that we're kind of coming after the fact sometimes. Um, so we need to be out there talking to, be, to do preventative things. But also I would like very much, number one priority for me is to have um, an impact assessment for all decisions that we make moving forward um, that we could also apply retroactively, but moving forward, we want to make sure that we are taking in account all of the, uh, the things that could, you know, be possibly harmful or damaging. Tim? So thank you for the question, Peggy. The township recently had a comprehensive report around equity, um, and it's some of the services that they provide as well as the equity within the organization itself. And so one of the things that I will say is that, you know, after reading the report, I would urge that the township implement the recommendations from the equity consultant in that report. Um, but I would also say that as an organization and a unit of government, we have to meet people where they're at and we have to take the time to explain what the township does and go out to where the people are. Um, because I believe that a lot of folks don't really understand what the township does. We are often confused with the village uh, and the services that the village provides. And, you know, as Addie said, we meet people when they are at their greatest need. And so your the outcomes of what you get should not be determined by who you are, but based on what you need and the township should um, continuously be there to support that. So that's why I believe we can tackle equity um, immediately is by focusing on the outcomes of the report that was provided to the township. Margaret? 
Well, I think there are a couple of other points I can add to my colleagues, and I agree with everything that's been said so far. For me, with equity, there's a sense of intentionality. It, it is something that we have to look at both intrinsically as well as extrinsically. And I do think that equity through diverse lenses has to start with an internal look of how do we communicate, how do we value, and how do we trust? And without those human factors, it doesn't matter how much we talk about programs and services, if elected officials are not viewed through this lens of trust and respect, where everyone's voice should be heard, and the diversity of thought is championed. That's what Oak Park is known for. So I believe in the intrinsic view of equity before we can look extrinsically or collectively as a unit of government. For me, that means that every single uh, board, that uh, any, any committee that we have has to have equal representation. And also our boards have to have representation of all diverse groups that make up our village. Thank you, Eric. Well, first of all, obviously a lot of good has been uh, said already on this in, important topic. Um, to what Tim was referring to, the study uh, that we commissioned by Rashida Graham Washington, um, took a look both at our internal operations and externally, but really, really was focused on how we represent equity internally. And I think first and foremost, you have to walk the talk. Um, I think that um, by, by having a report like that, by making its conclusions public, by signing off individually that you're pledging to, to support that, you're not only sending a message to your, your constituents, but to the staff that this is something that the board takes seriously because the reality is the board in, a, in this system of governance has one employee, the township manager, right? We're not allowed to wander up and down and tell the, the case managers, here's what you ought to be doing or tell the driver of the bus, you know, they need to, that's not our role. Our role is to work with the township manager and then to the staff. So the ability to represent that. And I wanna say the community service party that I'm a, a part of with Margie and Adi and Tim represents the kind of diversity and commitment equity that we're talking about. As I said, you have to walk the talk. Thank you, Valerie. So I agree with Adi. The township is focused on the most vulnerable in the community. And the board needs to lead by making sure we're listening and adapting and supporting and demonstrating respect to all involved and impacted by our services. As I understand it, equity means everyone has the same opportunity to achieve. Diversity on the township board is a good start and it does not ensure equity. The board needs to approach things with an equity lens. And as I understand an equity lens, it's deli being deliberately inclusive in decision-making to help decision makers focus on both equities in the process as well as outcomes. It's important for us to listen with an open mind, get input on needs and the needs and aspirations of all, and also consider those who are left out of the process. Thank you. Jacqueline, you're gonna start this next question. What ideas do you have for improving communication with the youth and senior citizens the township exists to serve to make sure they take full advantage of what the township offers? Sure, so that's a hard one that everyone's been trying to answer for a long time. Um, but I always immediately think about um, uh, rental units and how just historically renters are hard to reach, um, but if are we reaching out and and being part of their newsletters or their flyers or their you know do their um, property managers have this information to give to especially right now when they can't pay their rent or you know they need certain things um, so that always is top of mind because I, I'm also a renter so I, I see these things um, and I talk to my neighbors who often could use township services but. Um, in particular, I think that the, the rec center is going to be, the new rec center is going to be a huge tool that we can utilize for a lot of different um, parts of that question, you know, senior and youth um, information and getting, getting out there. We also need to just be where people are more often. And I think that that's a challenge at the moment, but um, we can strive for that. Thank you, Tim. Please repeat the question, Peggy. 
What ideas do you have for improving communication with the youth and senior, <laughs> senior citizens the township exists to serve to make sure they take full advantage of what the township offers? So one of the things I've been consistent about talking um, and mentioning throughout this campaign is that we must go where the people are. Um, and so that is to the PTO meetings, that is to the block clubs, that is to the um, condo social meetings and everything else that as the township, not only as elected officials, but also as the service providers, we must make the space and opportunity to go where the people are and explain what the township does. I think that as uh, Margie had mentioned earlier, a lot of folks really do confuse the difference between the township and the village. And so they don't know what is actually offered or what is available. And so I will continue to advocate for township leadership and activists and participants to just go where the people are, explain the services. And I believe that begins a conversation of ensuring that people can take advantage of what's available to them. Thank you, Margaret. Well, there's three things that come to my mind when I think of this that add to this conversation. Number one, the township has to do a better job of marketing our brand. We are looking at social media and our website, but of course, if you don't have access to technology, how would you know that? However, that is very important so that people now know, for example, we have what's called the health co connection, it's called the hub. And people can look at a closed loop referral system for things that they need from housing to any social services. So that's one way through media and our trying to get the word out that way. As far as youth goes, we need to partner much more explicitly and much more transparency uh, transparently with district 97 and 200 our youth belong to all of us and it's important that we can collaborate with fa families and parents especially those youth that really need to look at um, supplemental services through the opportunity gap and for seniors tell the story tell the story when you show up for lunch how many times you've really seen people benefit by senior services Thank you. Eric? I want to pick up on something that Tim has talked uh, talked about now and has talked about before, which is the notion of going to people where they are. And I think particularly in terms of our senior population and youth, that means not just on an individual basis, but as a board. And so I have proposed previously that we move our board meetings on a rotating basis and conduct them, for example, at one of the middle schools at one of the senior living facilities. Uh, before my current term, I served on the Oak Park Housing Authority, which runs Mills Park Tower. Perfectly nice conference room. No reason that you couldn't have the Oak Park Township post pandemic board come to a space like that and hear directly from the seniors. So I think we need to not just take it on an individual basis and you know, doing things like coming and volunteering at the lunch program once our lunch service reopens and that kind of thing, but as a board so that we can hear directly from the people. Um, and, and recently we've transitioned the focus of our, of our youth services from the high school, and we continue to do that, but more focus on the middle school. So again, you have to go to those locations where they are, but I think we should do it as a board as well as just as individuals. Thank you. Valerie? So I agree with most, of, most everything that's been said. I think we need to do more outreach. I think our partners can be helpful and we need to expand our partner base. For seniors, it may be doing outreach to seniors directly through congregations. It may be doing outreach to their children who are struggling to figure out how to support their parents. Um, we can also think about um, entry level programs. It's hard to describe all of the services that the township offers, but you could, once you get engaged with the township, you can con get connected to future services. So it might be as simple as the dine-out program, which are $4 coupons for a senior meal at restaurants in town. That is a great entry program. For youth, clearly the schools and the libraries and, and after-school programs are a great place to start. And we have scholarships for after-school programs so that kids whose families can't afford the, um, the entry fees or the uniforms can apply for, um, for funding. Thank you. Adi? Yes, yeah, so, uh, thank you. Uh, bad and clean up here. Um, I agree with just about everything that's been said uh, and uh, experienced. It, it's like uh, going to a buffet and going coming out hungry. 
there's these services that we definitely need to um, promote and market. Um, the, the, the naming, <laughs> you know, between the village and the township is a problem that we need to resolve. But we have less, we do next need to expand our uh, partnership base, but we have a lot of them that don't, that offer services th th uh, through funding from us, but we don't even get credit for it. So the branding, which we're working on is, is, is critical. I believe outreach, we do a lot of fairs and things like that, but I would like town halls instead of even just the, 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 the board meeting itself, town halls where we, we do hold them in the open spaces. And also the recreational center is gonna be a wonderful place because we're gonna be actually situated in there. So that would be wonderful, thank you. Uh, Tim, you're gonna start the next question. Illinois has over 8,500 units of government. What would you say to, to a proposal to abolish township government and have the village take over its responsibility? That is an interesting question because I believe it's on the ballot two or three years ago, the consolidation of units of government. Um, the village currently struggles to do with the to do the job that they have responsibilities for now and i'm not interested in entrusting them with the responsibilities of you know protecting youth services protecting senior services providing for the most indigent in our community if anyone has recently paid attention the village has spent a lot of time in fighting with itself where the township hasn't the township has kept their nose to the grind and continued to do the great work that they do on behalf of the people of oak park and so that's what I want to continue to see. And so I'm not uh, honestly interested in entrusting the village with the resources and the responsibilities of the township, because I do not believe in the current form or that they are able to maintain the high quality of services and the commitment to protecting social services in the most vulnerable in our community. Thank you, Margaret. Well, I think there's two two uh, ways to look at this question. One, one is um, the financial implications and one are the service implications. Considering, and I talked to Adi, our assessor about this, only 2.4% of the taxpayer bill goes for social services. So this raises a question, if the township government were merged with the village government, gets to the second issue, who's gonna deliver the services and to what, to what quality to meet what needs? So I think for the amount of money that the taxpayers are paying for township government and the services that they're getting, um, it, it, it's a very, very deep question considering now we know that the needs are growing. We know that alcohol and uh, substance abuse, mental health services, as we've talked about ageism, as well as uh, what we're indicating uh, now with um, uh, with youth services, all of these are going to be things that uh, the village is not equipped to handle. We are equipped to handle in the township. We know how to do it and we can continue to get better. Thank you. Eric? Yeah, I would simply say to those people that put this out there, that notion out there, that the proof is in the pudding. Um, there were politicians that put this idea forward as a quick fix, but it clearly were people that didn't know what they were talking about. Um, the reality is that Oak Park Township is the most direct, the most directly connected, and the most efficient way to deliver the kinds of services that we need, services that we know we're going to need more of. But at the same time, I would also point out that this current board voted not to take the full measure of TIF funds and raise our revenues, raise our, our levy accordingly. So this board is delivering services at lower cost and being fiscally responsible, um, and quite frankly, being very good at it. 16 years in a row, we've gotten the award from the Government Finance Officers Association for the quality of our budgeting. So not only do we deliver great services, we do it at lower cost. And I don't think anybody, to, to Tim's point, has any confidence that, the, that if the village took it over, they would do better. They would jettison things at a time where we actually need more. Thank you. Valerie? So I agree with everything everybody said. I do believe we need to collaborate with the other arms of government to find efficiencies and maximize impact. I agree with Tim that the village has too much on its plate already and is struggling to handle it. The township has been a great steward of the, res of the tax resources that they've been given. The 
one thing that would make me really nervous about consolidation, the township has appropriately funded their pensions when the village hasn't. I don't want township employees to be at risk because they go into a merged pool. This idea got traction because, or at least in part because Evanston did this and found savings. But Evanston spent more per capita on their township. The savings aren't, aren't demonstrable in Oak Park the way they were in Evanston. I'm not sure demonstrable is a word, but you get it. <laughs> close enough, close enough. You got it. <laughs> thank you, Adi. All right, yes, thank you. Um, no, so again, uh, one has to look at the mission uh, of the township uh, uh, to see that it's different than what the village provides. Uh, two different uh, structures entirely. Uh, I was a board, school board president um, and I, I remember when people started saying, why don't we have a unitary district? Uh, well, <laughs> as soon as they said that, they realized that no, the cost will go up, not down. Um, I would, uh, we prioritize social, social services. If you merge with, this, with the village, are they gonna do that? Not only that, how much are they gonna pay our people for what we do and what we get out of our, uh, of our staff? I, 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 I just, I doff my cap uh, to them. And uh, no, uh, let the village pick up my garbage. I wanna call the police. Uh, and have them deliver, you know, right away. But I don't want to go to them for my social services. Thank you, Jacqueline. Now, this is a great one to be last for because it's really just I. What everybody is saying is exactly right. When I first was looking into should I maybe run for township, that was all I was kind of flooded with was oh my gosh, so many people want to consolidate. But I, I quickly learned that when you really look at the the money that is being spent and how far the each dollar is getting stretched, like I, I don't feel that there's an argument much there. Um, I also like as Tim was saying that I, I don't want the village doing social services. I mean, if you're just looking at people who are interested in running the village versus people who are running or running for township board, the two totally different kinds of people, not good nor bad, but we're talking about advocates and people who really you know, are more focused on um, development and all of those kinds of things. We're able to separate it out by just even the decision makers in a better way. And I think that that's invaluable, especially we, we aren't, I don't believe a tax burden. I think that we really stretch things far and it's, it's a great place to start for equity too, by separating the two. Thank you. Margaret, you're gonna start this next question. Um, the township used the reserve fund instead of proper uh, uh, use their reserve fund for property purchase instead of issuing bonds. Are there any plans uh, for future expansions um, during the same process? Well, I can talk to that, Peggy, in terms of what the Community Mental Health Board ha has done with some of their reserve for funds uh, to be part of this new recreation center. And you know, cash reserves are important for all of our all of our services to make sure that um, what we have budgeted for is actually going to be able to be expended with what we allocate for programs. In the case of the uh, Community Mental Health Board, they're meeting in a bank on Lake Street, so there is no visibility. And it was a good use of looking at the reserve funds uh, over a long-term um, use of that money that was gonna be a cost savings to the actual physical facility and benefit it with reducing the stigma of mental health. And so that's just one example of how those reserves uh, can really, really help us with decision-making to increase the visibility in the future. Thank you, Eric. I'm sorry, Peggy, could I ask you to repeat the wording of the question? I want to make sure I'm answering it the right way. Absolutely. Um, you, you, the township used their reserve fund for property purchase instead of issuing bonds. Is there, are there any plans um, for any more expansions or use, uh, of use of funds this way for the future? Okay, terrific. And um, I'm pleased to have been um, a member of the boards that did that. Um, that saved the rainy day funds. Um, there's a special designation that you have to do from a budgeting standpoint to do that for capital improvements because of the way these things are counted. 
and um, the way we allocate our, uh, our fund balance. Um, one of the most important functions the Township Board has is this fiduciary function. We are also, by the way, the fiduciary for the Community Mental Health Board. Their levy comes through us, and I think by working with them, we've made the deal for the new rec center uh, better. Um, but as I said, we have a, a, a still new facility across the street from the one in my background here uh, for seniors. Um, and, I, and I think to Tim's point, um, it probably would be, we're going to where the youth are by participating in the rec center. And so from a capital standpoint, I think that's, we're going to participate both not just the mental health board, but also youth services and senior services. I think that's a more efficient uh, way of doing that. Now, I happen to do capital development during the week for my day job. So, um, but I don't see the, a need for us to be doing it now um, because we have the senior facility and because the rec center is coming that will help the other, other things that we do. Thank you, Valerie. Yeah, I'm not aware of any capital plans besides the mental health uh, board investment in the community mental health center. Um, I um, believe that uh, the remote work that has happened by many of the staff through the pandemic will actually enable us to free up space for growth um, if we have it. So I don't see capital needs, which is the, which as I understand it was the core of the question, but I'm gonna move to reserves. Um, I don't think we know the full impact of this pandemic and I am grateful that the township has built reserves that give us the flexibility to respond to the need as we understand it better. Uh, the general assistance fund in 2008 and 2009, um, de the demand against that grew dramatically. We haven't seen that yet, um, but when the federal government's um, payments stop, we may need to dip into reserves. Thank you. Adi? Yes, uh, well, um, I, I actually, I don't foresee uh, in the future, well, immediate future, because we don't know um, that we're going to be in a, a situation where we want to use um, the uh, funds for any capital project. But um, what has been done thus far has really uh, been beneficial. One, we're not retiring bonds. We're not f f making f uh, payments for bonds and things like that, if anything those monies were there, they were calculated over time and used properly. Uh, anyone who uses a senior services uh, facility uh, can see that. Uh, and then with the, uh, the mental health board going into that rec center, the long-term look is actually savings uh, for if, you know, and they are gonna be in a public space where we will encourage everyone to, to see what we do uh, and that goes to transparency and, and visibility. Thank you. Jacqueline? Um, I am not, a, I don't know too much about um, what we currently have in reserves, but what I do know is that it very much speaks to just what has happened in the past, how great the township is at, at managing their budgets. And another reason why we shouldn't even consider um, consolidating, but also I think one great thing that we have the opportunity to do is because we have three major, um, between the senior services, youth services, um, and mental health board, we have those concrete um, services that we provide, but we have all these other partnerships and we have a very fluid um, opportunity to move around things. Um, one of the things that I really would be suggesting is that we have rotations of the programs that we support to, to make it more equitable across different groups of people. Um, but so I think that, that we have in our budget already opportunity to leave space for something as it comes up. As, as everyone was saying in pandemic right now, we don't know so much. So much has flipped upside down that we have to kind of keep it um, an open mind for things now. Thank you, Tim. So I'll say ditto like five times across the previous folks who have spoken before me. Um, and I don't see the need uh, at this moment in this present time for the township to issue bonds or to expand anything. They have been a great steward of the people's money. And so I expect that if elected, 
I will be joining some great folks and continue to be a great steward of the people's money. And so, no, I don't see a need to issue bonds or to expand capital projects. Um, as you know, and has been mentioned, there is a relationship in between the Community Mental Health Board and the Community Rec Center that was developing. And that's where some services will go and we will you know, have folks who are able to access services there. And so I think that's a great opportunity of collaboration, collaboration that is not often talked about, but uh, will be ever present for folks to uh, kind of see in person um, and in their face. So. No, if that answers the question, sorry. Okay, yeah. Um, this will be the last question and um, Eric, you're gonna start it. So you've talked about collaboration with the park district um, on the new community center. What are some ways um, that you envision the township and the village and the schools um, and maybe the library collaborating and sharing for more efficient use of resources and delivery of services? That's actually the focus of my campaign uh, for this term, um, Peggy. I, um, uh, I, th I think we need to dramatically step up our collaboration with our other bodies of government. And again, because situations are changing. Now I wrote about this, there's a piece in the Wednesday Journal that you can read um, and where I have called for there to be a joint board meeting, a meeting of the board of the village and of the township, specifically to look at the question of the balance of expenditures in our community on areas uh, for law enforcement relative to expenditures for social services. Um, there's a lot of discussion about this. Now, I do not support defund the police or anything like that. However, I, citizens have been saying, you know, do we need to be buying military hardware? Um, I think there are, are, are instances where there may be economies, um, but I think we have to have those direct policy conversations because as I mentioned right now, we have one employee. And so you can have the village manager and the township manager speak, but they, they don't set policy. And so we need to be able to have those policy collaboration conversations with the village and with the other units of government. And I've called for that publicly. Thank you. Valerie? Yeah, we, we already collaborate some. Um, and I think we need to build on that. For example, we use the, we share the buses with the park district for transportation. I think we can do more with the park district to reach youth, to reach seniors. Um, I think um, that we can do more with the schools. Our schools, uh, social workers are very aware of the youth services programs, but we serve the whole family and there may be opportunities if they had broader awareness of all our services to engage with to get connected to um, more, get people connected to more services. Again, not governmental, but our nonprofit partners, um, as we deal with Thrive or um, New Moms or Housing Forward, there may be an opportunity to connect people to more services. And lastly, I think the library is the information hub for the community and we need to do a better job getting the word out of what we do at, um, through the library. Thank you. Um, Adi? Uh, Peggy, could you please re repeat the question? Uh, talked yeah, about uh, collaborating with the park district. Um, what are some ways you envision the township and the village and the schools and the library collaborating and sharing for more efficient use of resources and delivery of services? Okay, thank you. So there's an African saying uh, that when the resources run low in the uh, in the jungle, the animals start looking at each other differently. <laughs> you know, uh, when when we really narrow this thing down, we have to find ways of stretching these resources we have. And the pandemic showed us that. Uh, I happen to be involved uh, with uh, the special government group where we came together through the pandemic uh, to share information, look at areas of an opportunities. That's how the park district and, and got in, you know, started getting transportation for us. We a township get a lot of volunteers, you know, and they saw that the PTO council got involved. And, and, and with that, we were able to really uh, affect a major change. And I think it's something we need to continue doing. I served on the iGov, where again, all the six 
taxing bodies come together to actually assess what each other does. So we need to know what we do. That way we can look at where the opportunities are. Thank you. Jacqueline? Yes, yeah, so I think that we need to, well, first of all, in order to do everything efficiently, we do need to be talking to each other. And we're, it, the township, we have a unique opportunity that the services we provide are for everybody in the community. You know, the, the school is dealing with parents and kids and things like that, but are they also dealing with seniors? No. So if we're not in constant contact and figuring out which is the best way to approach things, then we're not doing our job as township trustees. So this needs to be on a regular basis. We need to be consistently reevaluating what we can do and how we can partner with the other bodies, but also allowing the groups to do what they do best. We don't, we don't need this you know, territorial, this is what I do, and maybe they're not doing it as well. It has to be collaborative because we're, we're talking about everybody. We're not talking about small pockets of, of, of people. Thank you. Tim? Could you repeat the question, please? Absolutely. Um, you talked about uh, collaboration with the Park District. What are some ways you envision the township and the village and the schools and the library collaborating and sharing for more efficient use of resources and delivery of services? That is a big question. Um, they've done a good job. <laughs> One minute. Let's go. <laughs> the township has done a good job. So there's the MAN homework helper program for youth. There's a long fellow homework helper program. There's a snowball program. There's the intramural programs, all things that youth services work to fund. That's not even talking about the other things that, you know, senior services does. So there is a lot of collaboration. There's a lot of um, <clears throat> utilization or I'm going to come back to collaboration. There's, there's just a lot of services that are already married together. And so the township has done a good job partnering with the other six taxing bodies. We do a horrible job of telling you about it. And so that's why I think the question comes up often that people don't know how much partnership is there and how much collaboration is there amongst the township and the things that the township uh, helps fund. So my focus would be just to tell more folks about it and to talk about these programs. Heck, I just named four or five programs that most folks did, probably didn't even know that the township uh, funds or works with even in the school system and other things, and I'm still deficient in naming other programs. So it's already there and we should continue to do that and we should just talk about it more. Thank you. Margaret? Um, I have a great deal of respect for the other uh, governmental bodies in Oak Park. I've used services from all of them. So I think the issue here is one of leadership. I think it's a matter of breaking down the silos and talking to each other, as many of the candidates tonight have already talked about. It's a matter of being a leader that can have humility and can say, you know, tell me what you do with your money and your funds and not point fingers at each other in a way that stifles uh, innovative program development and breaking down um, some of the barriers that we have and we've talked about with equity. The pandemic is one thing has brought us together and we're really proud of the township being a call center and working with the village. That's one way. The schools are also looking at programs uh, such as Girls on the Rise and our interventionist program. But when you have one governmental body pulling out funding for a joint program, that hurts. We need to be able to talk to each other with respect and with leadership that can be collaborative. Thank you. We're going to do closing statements now. And Valerie, you're going to start first. You have one minute for closing statements. You can finish a thought maybe from something else or just do a closing statement. Thank you, Peggy. The League, Rashmi, and the Library for hosting this forum and all the work you put in to help educate voters. Voters, thank you for taking the time to learn about all the candidates. We're blessed in this election with a wealth of candidates running to share their time and talent. I would like to expand my service to the township to support the excellent staff and strengthen the township. The township makes Oak Park a more compassionate community. I know the township is a volunteer and I believe my skills in strategic planning, marketing and fiscal stewardship will strengthen the board. I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Uh, Adi? 
thank you. Uh, thank you for a very good forum. Uh, well run. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, and I appreciate uh, the league and the uh, public library for assisting us in getting the message out. Um, this is part of how we actually showcase the township. And I think it's been a lot of good discussion. Uh, my desire to serve this community um, is what motivates me to seek this office. Uh, I'm honored to serve uh, and I ask, I ask for your vote uh, to continue to do so. Um, I'm a Rotarian. We believe in service above self. Uh, and also, we also believe that uh, service is uh, the rent we pay uh, for living the kind of society that we want. Um, and uh, I enjoy living in Oak Park. I want to age in place here in Oak Park. I want my ashes to be left here in Oak Park. So I'm committed. Uh, in a ham and egg sandwich, the chicken is contributing, the pig is committed. I'm committed to the Oak Park <laughs> services and, and I enjoy my time with Township. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jacqueline? So thank you everyone for um, putting the forum on and also for attending. It's, as I said before, it's really important that we have people engaged in the community because that's the only way that we can make better policies when people are engaged. Um, and I think Oak Park does a pretty good job of that, but um, that's not, oh, you know, it, it ebbs and flows. And right now I think everyone's doing, doing great. And I really am hopeful that, you know, people see that I really have a passion for, for helping others. This is, as since I was a teenager, I have been doing everything I possibly can to um, make my community better. And I promise to do that at the board table. I promise to do that if I'm not at the board table. And um, I think diversity of voices is always great. And we should, you know, I encourage everyone else to, you know, to, to help us out, you know, even after this is all over. And uh, thank you. Hopefully we'll see everyone April 6th, at least or earlier. <laughs> thank you. Um, Tim. Thank you to the league. Thank you to the library for your partnership. Um, and thank you to the five other folks who are running for township trustee. Um, my name is Tim Thomas, and I want to serve you. I've been active and engaged in the community. I'm a current Youth Services Committee member. Um, and if elected, I hope that I can bring my perspective to the board table of equity and responsibility and just a commitment to service. So please go out and vote on April 6th. Please support my running mates on the community service slate, um, Margie, Addie, and Eric. And thank you all. Thank you. Margaret? You know, I know that there are people in Oak Park that are stuck. They are isolated. They're uncertain of their future in Oak Park. There's an opportunity gap for youth. There's ageism for seniors, and there's the stigma of mental health and the debilitation of disabilities. The township needs to embrace everyone in, the, in these areas, and I want to be there. I want to be there to embrace them as well. I want to be there guiding and leading the way with a cohesive and committed board that listens and learns together. And I really appreciate the viewpoint of everyone that has spoken today and my colleagues on the community service party, the diversity we represent. And I'm a very reflective person. So I wanted to just leave with a little line from Amanda Gorman's poem, our national poet, the new dawn blooms as we free it for there's always light. If only we're brave enough to see it and be it. The light is what we hold inside ourselves to ignite others and to tell us their needs, to ask for help, and to reach out to others with a helping hand. I have the light inside my heart, and I want to extend my hand to continue to be on the Township Trustee Board. Thank you. And Eric? Thank you, Peggy. And I want to thank the League and the Library. I want to have a special shout out to, uh, to Bridget, our timekeeper, and ask, we've been to a lot of forums, and I'm wondering if you all could maybe teach some of the other groups how to do this, because this has been extremely well run, and we really appreciate it. I also want to thank, um, I've been in the office for some time now. Uh, I'm running on the, on the community service party with Margie and Adi, and we brought Tim on. I want to thank Tim for stepping up. I also want to thank Valerie and Jackie for having the willingness to step up. And I think that's an indication that people understand that the township does good things, but we need to do more of it, right? Um, and, and so I'm really glad that they've been, they've been uh, willing to do that. Um, I also wanna say that I think what we need above all is innovative collaboration. Now, innovation takes experience. I can tell you having served on this board, it takes a while to learn how to do what we do 
and how everything works. I can step in day one because I've already been doing it and pursue the kind of innovation that can create both equity and economy. You don't, it's not pie. You don't have to pick one or the other. You can do both, but it takes experience. And I think I offer that. I'd ask for your vote. My name is Eric Davis. Well, thank you candidates for your participation, your participation, your sharing your thoughts your for, uh, for this forum. Um, it was extremely uh, informative and educational, uh, even for me who've been in uh, Oak Park for too many years to count. So we, and we also thank you uh, again for stepping up to serve our community. Um, that's what makes Oak Park such a great place to live as people get involved. Um, you'll be able to review these uh, recorded forum um, on the uh, Oak Park Library website um, or their YouTube channel and also the League YouTube channel um, once the video is uh, available. Um, thank you again. And this is our last Oak Park forum. Um, and <laughs> you have the rest of the afternoon to go out and enjoy <laughs> the beautiful weather. So thank everybody uh, for participation. Great job. And again, thank you, thank you to the library for Bridget and uh, Rushmi, we, I, we could not have done this without them. <laughs>